Welcome back to the second part of our epic journey. In the last episode, you saw our Renault Quid set off from New Delhi for its 19,000 km journey around the world. The drive had clocked over 9,000 km over 24 days as it reached Bishkek, the capital of Kyrgyzstan. And that's where I came in. Bishkek is the largest city in Kyrgyzstan, though it's still small in absolute terms. On our list of must-sees in Bishkek was the city's central area, Ala Two Square, the impressive Parliament House, and the Victory Monument, built in the memory of those who lost their lives in the Second World War. As it turned out, we were out about town on a very auspicious day. Decked up brides and beaming grooms were to be seen all across the city, and there was plenty of local music to listen to as well. The next day, however, welcome to what looks like Santa Claus's home. We are in Kyrgyzstan, it's minus 2 degrees centigrade and it is snowing. Now this is my first day on this epic drive and I must say I have got a very cold welcome. We have to drive through these conditions, it's a long journey onwards, we will be crossing into Kazakhstan today. So uh, I think we shouldn't waste any more time and just make the best of the conditions. That is a lot of snow. Ah. Thankfully, the plucky Renault showed its metal and started at the very first crank. Just as well because border crossings can take long and time was of the essence. <laughs> Here we are, we started from Bishkek in Kyrgyzstan and as you saw in the morning, the whole place was full of snow, it was minus 2 degrees outside and uh, the car, both the cars were snowed in. The quid was covered with snow, the windscreen was covered, it was really really cold. So yeah, now we're on the road, it's still snowing, it's very very slushy on the road. Driving in Kyrgyzstan in these snowy conditions has been slightly challenging, only for a reason that it's got only one front windscreen wiper, it's doing the job pretty well but there's no Viper at the back or oh, defogger, so it's literally snowed and uh, iced out. You can't see anything at the back. Even the side uh, glasses are all fogged up. So on and off, I need to roll the windows down to get some visibility on the side view mirrors. The trip till the border wasn't easy thanks to the snow and slush on the roads, but the quid on its Seat snow tires managed just fine. Border crossing didn't take long and we'd successfully entered the fifth country on our drive. Now, Kazakhstan is the richest of the stans that formed from the disintegration of USSR. The wide and superbly surfaced expressway that welcomed us into the country certainly indicated that as well. The road was deserted but also extensively patrolled by radar gun armed police so, one eye was always on the speedometer. We reached Shimkent, which was our halt for the night, well into the evening, but the feeling was of being in a vibrant city. The neon signs of the multiple eateries around town certainly made it seem so. Kizilauda, in the northwestern direction, was to be the next stop on our route. Shivering, huffing and puffing, we managed to get some photos at the town centre and then onto the highway it was. The expressway of the day before had given way to a dual carriageway and soon after it became clear that we had left urban Kazakhstan far behind. The Arrow Strait Highway cut through the vast Kazakh grasslands like a laser. Scenic as it was, it wasn't easy going. With no trees or barriers to break its flow, the crosswind became very strong, making it essential to keep a firm hand on the bantam weight quid steering wheel at all times. We reached Aralsk just in time for dinner, but nothing 
prepared us for the morning after. We are in a town called Aralt in Kazakhstan. Now we have a 570 km journey today to another town called Ekto Bay if I'm not wrong. Uh, we were supposed to leave at 6 a.m. Unfortunately, it's about 10 and the delay has been caused due to the lack of fuel. It has been a start at minus 23 degrees and three hours later, it's just gone down to minus 19. We've been freezing all this while. Anyway, the cars are fueled up. I think we have to rush. So, wish us luck. So far, it wasn't so cold. This is the coldest that we've been on this drive and I must tell you, it, it was really, really freezing. You couldn't even stand outside, forget filling the fuel yourself or whatever. It was absolutely difficult. And uh, how about the start? At least the car started easily. Oh, it was really surprising. It started with one crank and uh, no problems at all there. But hopefully it stays like this the rest of the journey and uh, there's no problem starting the car. Still, the cold did take its toll. That day, we recorded the lowest fuel economy of just 9 km per litre. Not what you want on a day of 600 km plus driving. And remember, the Quid just has a 28 litre fuel tank. On the positive side, if there's one thing about being far away from civilization, it's that you get front row seats to the most beautiful vistas. Gorgeous sunset seen through the windscreen of the Quid almost made up for the hardships of the day. Day 30 of the Quid drive was our last in Kazakhstan. There are multiple borders with neighbouring Russia, but the route we took seemed to lead us through the set of a Hollywood western. There were dry fields as far as the eye could see and even rolling tumbleweed for effect. Good, bad or ugly, the scenery didn't change for the 300 odd kilometers right till the Russian border. Formalities at the border took long and the cold didn't help either. But heck, we were now in Russia. The advantage of travelling westward by road is that you earn a precious few hours of extra time whenever you cross over into a new time zone. Russia has 11 time zones and the region we were in was 2 hours behind Kazakhstan from where we just came in. Out on the road too, Russia felt very different from Kazakhstan of the day before. For one, English had disappeared from the signboards. Trees made a reappearance on the changing landscape and there was a whole lot more activity on Russia's roads, especially from heavy-duty truck traffic. What didn't change in Russia was the weather. Even though the sun was out, there was no getting around the cold. Well, it's yet another freezing cold day in Russia and the minus temperatures only mean one thing, all water bodies are frozen. We are right now on a frozen lake and there are a few locals in the background who are doing the serious work of fishing but the rest of us here who've never really been on a frozen lake are acting absolutely like juveniles and just slipping and sliding around sorry about that but There was an air of excitement on day 33 because the day's drive was to take us to Russia's capital, Moscow. Oh. So it's yet another landmark day, I would say, on the quid drive. We are leaving the town of Spask and we are headed to Moscow. It's uh, about 470 kilometers away. The sun is out, so hopefully the conditions will be good. Uh, I think we are running a bit behind schedule. We were told we should reach Moscow before Russia begins. But uh, we had a very nice breakfast of cheese and sausages and porridge. So I think we'll get stuck in the meat of the traffic. 
In retrospect, I guess it was that bad joke that led us to experience Moscow's notorious traffic jams. We eventually reached our hotel in the heart of the city well into the evening. We've reached one of the big cities on the Renault Quid Drive. We are in majestic Moscow and behind me is one of the big landmarks of the city. It is the St. Basil's Cathedral and uh, the eccentric structure is actually adding a lot of colour to what is a very dreary grey day. And the best news for us is that this is just one of the many sights to see in this town. So that's what we're going to be doing today, exploring this city. Our tryst with magnificent Moscow had us visit the popular Red Square, the beautiful GUM building, the State Historical Museum and Lenin's Mausoleum. The quid's small size and light controls came handy in the heart of Moscow where traffic is dense and finding a parking space is harder than winning the lottery. We made our way around town, passing by the iconic Gorky Park and the resplendent Cathedral of Christ the Saviour. And finally, for sunset at 4pm, it was back to the Red Square to see the complex in a new light. It was worth it. Having learnt our lesson with Moscow's traffic, we decided on an early start out. The highway which we were on connects Moscow and St. Petersburg and hence sees a lot of foreign tourist traffic. Toll cost us the equivalent of 250 rupees, but more notably, it was the first toll we had paid since we left China a few thousand kilometers back. With nothing but snow and ice on either side of the expressway's guardrails, the Russian countryside looked like a giant skating rink. We started day 36 with a tour of Veliki Novgorod. It's a town of historical significance as it is said that the Russian state originated here in 862 AD. Inside the town's Kremlin stands the golden domed cathedral of Saint Sophia. Built in 1050 AD, it is the oldest church in Russia. We punctuated the day's short drive to St. Petersburg with a halt at a Renault dealership en route, where the staff took keen interest in the quid. St. Petersburg is the last town we are stopping in very cold Russia. Uh, this is apparently a town you need one week to see in its entirety. Unfortunately, we don't have the luxury of time and we'll have to make the most of our day. But it's not as early as a start as it looks. This is 8.30 in the morning. Good light is still one hour away. Anyway, we'll be taking in the sights and sounds of St. Petersburg starting with Palace Square which happens to be the city centre. If Moscow is Russia's political capital, St. Petersburg is its cultural capital. Literally, every building looked like a work of art. To my eyes, some buildings stood out more than the others. One of them being the Church of the Saviour on Blood, a structure reminiscent of Moscow's St. Basil's Cathedral. Moving forward, our plan was to bid adieu to Russia and cross into the European Union through Estonia. Unfortunately, it was also my last day of the drive. I was flying back to India and the team would continue on its drive to Paris. And that's exactly what we set off to do with a bright and early start to the final European leg of our journey. Eager to cross the European border, the drive started exactly as planned. But you've heard about the Murphy's Law, right? So we are finally out of Russia and officially into Europe. It's just 6 p.m. in the evening. It's winters here, so it's really dark. It's going to be a night drive. It's about two and a half hours from here, from the border to the town of Tallinn. Let's make good time and get there. 
we finally arrived in Tallinn, Estonia's capital, a good four hours behind schedule, and we couldn't help but hit the sack. Tallinn's old town is full of cobbled streets and lovely old buildings. That's why we started the next day capturing the sights on our cameras. And here we have uh, Doug today from uh, Autocar UK who joined us as Estonia, who will be driving with us all the way to Paris, which is our final destination. Welcome, Doug. Thank you, Raoul. So, are you excited? Very excited and cold. Somehow, <laughs> I've managed to come away from the UK and find somewhere colder at winter, so that's nice. Well, if someone from the UK is saying it's cold, it's really cold it's really here. Cold, yeah. So how does it feel? You've driven the 800cc version of the yeah. same car in India. We went down the Konkan coast. Yes, that, exactly. We, yeah. So how does it feel in comparison state of? Um, well, so straight away, I mean, we're up to 90 kilometers, which was a lot easier than it was um, in, the in, the, in the 800cc, yeah. And yeah, just certainly quicker than the 800cc. Much better, a bit quieter as well, obviously. Yes. Um, still kind of gruff acceleration but it's fine like you know and obviously you've come all the way from Delhi in it and it's managed it so I think it's it's miraculous to be able to make you know from an engineering point of view to be able to create something like this True. for that little money is just absolutely mental. Our route to Estonia didn't include any expressways but had long country roads through stretches of forest with six 90 kilometers per hour speed limit not to mention the aggressive lorry drivers attempting fearless overtakes. Progress was steady but slow. We paused in Latvia for lunch and some more swimming photos before powering through to our overnight stop in Kaunas, Lithuania, our third country of the day. In the morning, we drove to yet another old town. Eastern European cities have a wealth of them and soaked up the history and architecture. It's surrounded by snow and it's cold. And yet, there's some solace to be found in the fact that the temperature is well above minus 23 degrees we faced the week before. Then, it was back onto the highways and through the border into Poland. The European roads were a breeze and the snow-covered hills gave us the perfect backdrop for some more photos as we ploughed on through the capital, Warsaw. Of course, we were grateful for the extra grip from the winter tyres as the night fell and the gentle snowfall became a blizzard. <laughs> Yet another cold, cold morning. Uh, we're in Poland, uh, Warsaw. Today we're driving to Berlin. It's about 600 kilometers. Really long way to get to Berlin. Uh, so let's get going. But before we start off, of course, we need to clean the cars. the snow behind once we hit the motorways. Sticking to the speed limits, the quid and the duster make easy work on the highways. Yes, after the hectic last couple of days, it's been pretty smooth sailing on well-maintained big expressways. The sleepy old towns in Eastern Europe became a distant memory as we blasted past big German cities on the way to Berlin for our overnight stop. Of course, we couldn't just leave Berlin without a stop at one of Germany's most famous landmarks, the Brandenburg Gate. Soon enough, it was back on the road again with Cologne in our sights. 43 days, 10 countries and 18,000 kilometers later, here we are in Germany and on our way to our final destination which is Paris in France. It wasn't long enough before we hit the glorious Autobahn a stretch of de-restricted expressway in Germany where you can go as fast as you want. Yes, it does sound too good to be true, like it can't exist, but it does. Were the Autobahn your uh, favourite road to drive on? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> what, why yes? Uh, yes, because there are sections where you can just drive flat out and uh, you can go all out in the car. What was the top speed we got in this? 
Uh, on the speedo, we've got the max speed, uh, I think, around 162. Okay. Which is ridiculous, really. Which is ridiculous. I mean, this car is just made for uh, city roads and uh, it's not meant to do such speeds. So, it's really amazing how it reaches such speeds and, you know, it's still stable at those speeds. But it coped really well at those high speeds. It was kind of jittery. I mean, when I had to go driving, it was yeah. kind of jittery and you could tell it's not designed to go at speeds like that, but considering the thousands of kilometers that it's done before it, and it's still still in one piece, you know, there's no no sign of any... It, it is a rock star. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Climbing through the Autobahn, the day flew by, and we reached our hotel in Brühl, on the outskirts of Cologne. There's a sense of relief and achievement in the air, as Paris is within touching distance. But there's one more day to go. Day 43 and it was the final countdown, the home stretch. We were met with a beautiful wintry morning and after one of the most picturesque photo shoots of the trip at a frozen palace, we were back on the road. It was pretty busy but the traffic eventually cleared into the afternoon and we passed through Belgium without even noticing it. Such are the relaxed borders in mainland Europe. And see the first road signs directing us to the final destination, Paris. Everyone's excitement was calmed slightly by the horrendous queues of traffic going into the city. But before long, we're carefully navigating through the free for all around the Arc de Triomphe. Bonjour Paris, we were there. The ceremonial flagging is by Dr. Mohan Kumar, India's ambassador to France, and Sumit Swani, CEO and MD of Renault India. So we're finally in Paris and it feels absolutely, absolutely amazing. Surprisingly, no issues whatsoever. May it be tyre puncture, may it be electricals, may it be any sort of breakdown. It was absolutely, absolutely smooth. I was in the duster which has all the perks, all the four-wheel drive, but the quid was still doing the same stuff the duster was doing and doing it really well. I joined on a smoother section, if I may say so, so from Kyrgyzstan and we've uh, had no really uh, problems at all. So I think my highlight was the overall journey I had. Highlight for me is our team is a good team and is the hero for me.